Hey developers, let's talk about the 10 JavaScript libraries and frameworks that all beginners should know about. Let's talk about it. Hey, just a quick reminder before we begin, Udemy is having their last $10 site-wide sale starting today. So you can go in, you can go on there and get some really great courses. I put some of my favorites below. They are actually affiliate links, so if you click on them, I get a couple of bucks. Let's begin. So last week I had the fun pleasure of creating a guest post for my friend Laurence's website, learn to code with dot me. And on that website, I created an article called 10 JavaScript libraries and frameworks you should know about. So I decided that maybe I should give you guys an idea of that article and also what I thought 10 frameworks you should know about. These are in no particular order. I'm not doing a countdown or anything. If you're interested in that, I would check out some of the other videos I did. I did the five best frameworks, JavaScript frameworks you should know in 2017. I'll link that below in the description. But if you just want to know some, some frameworks and libraries that you should be interested in, if you are new to web development, or even if you are just starting out and you haven't heard of some of these, these are great things to know about. And I go over each one briefly with some general information. And so I have the, the libraries I have listed in this article you could see here is jQuery, underscore and Lodash, D3, React, Glimmer. And then on the framework side, I talk about Bootstrap, Angular and AngularJS, Ember.js, Aurelia and Vue. And it's a good point to remember that there is a difference between libraries and frameworks and I discuss it here right at the beginning of the article. And I even say it right here that uh, there's actually a little bit of disagreement between what exactly is a library and, and what exactly is a framework. So I included the links to a Stack Overflow article, a YouTube video, and a Quora article on it. It's a lot of people have different ideas on what each is. But generally what I see is if you have a reusable piece of code that oftentimes has one primary use case, uh, is a library and then if you have a framework it's more in control of your app it helps you direct you on the architecture and the project that follows a lot of times frameworks have multiple libraries but they don't necessarily have to have multiple libraries I think in the future I'm going to do a video about this about what the difference between a framework is and a library in just generally in, in programming but that that's that's how I I think about it so let's, I'm gonna go ahead and go over each one of these and talk about it and we'll see what you guys think. And by the way, if I've missed a library or framework that you think people should know about, leave a comment below and let me know. That really would be awesome. So of course, everyone's heard of this, but it's worth mentioning that jQuery is uh, still out there. It is one of the most well-used libraries in the world. I mean, some people think it's used in almost over 50% of all websites created. Um, some people would argue too that um, this is like the great, a, a very good starter library to learn. So if you're learning web development and you're just you're dip, deep, you're diving into HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you kind of want to know what to do for these, um, what the next step is, then learning jQuery is a good idea because most likely you're going to run into code especially once you get your first job that uses jQuery. And then I kind of talked a little bit about what it is. Um, it can help you select DOM elements, create animation, handle events. It kind of has a good ecosystem involved behind it. There's a lot of plugins that were written with jQuery. Um, and of course, uh, one of the original goals was to have no cross browser incompatibilities and it helps promote separation by HTML and JavaScript. I know um, there's been some controversy lately on J on jQuery, which once again, this could have its own video, that maybe that some of the original goals of jQuery have already been, I don't know, accomplished by using uh, the normal DOM that we use today. Dom, the DOM has, a, that's the DOM document object model inside the browser itself. It's been advanced to the point where we have query selectors and, and and query selector all I mean we can do a lot of things that we couldn't do before and we had to use jQuery and then also there's this argument that there is this kind of rise of client-side frameworks or also called single page application frameworks where on the initial load the website comes in 
with the initial load uh, and it doesn't have to refresh to navigate through the website that jQuery may break your application if you you know use the jQuery events because the library or the framework that you you're using might already have that implemented so there is definitely some cons and some positives to using jQuery but I think it's something you should know about underscore and lodash is uh, utility libraries it kind of Underscore what came first had over 100 functions. Definitely, if you're interested in functional programming, it it was uh, used for that heavily. And then Lodash came around. Uh, John David Dalton created the library to have more consistent cross environment iterations for support for arrays, strings, and argument objects. And Lodash has really become a superset of Underscore, and a lot of the development from Underscore has gone to Lodash. And then once again, there's some controversy if you really need to use this type of library because uh, this, a lot of JavaScript has evolved too and some things that you had to use a utility library for now is built into the newer versions of JavaScript like ES6 that has uh, maps and, and, and other things that you may have had to use Lodash for in the past. So just keep that in mind. And D3.js is of graphing and visualization framework, uh, excuse me, we're still talking about libraries in here, so you can do really cool animations and visualizations with it. There is React. Um, some people consider this a framework, but in, on the website itself, it's called the library. And I go a little bit about the history and talk a little bit about single page applications. Um, one thing React is really known for is JSX, although JSX is just a library and by itself that you can get working with other single page application frameworks like Vue, but it, it is really powerful. It's not, it's not a templating language. It's really full on JavaScript and uh, React has become really, really popular. So I kind of go a little bit into the history of that. If you want to read the article, I'll link it in the description below. Glimmer.js is one of my new favorites. It's made by the same team who created Ember.js and it makes lightweight UI components and for the web so you can do a lot of cool stuff with it it's kind of took some of the shortcomings of ember in its big size and they made a kind of a smaller just ui library that you can use to make web components or just make uh, you can actually create a whole application on it it's still missing a few things of course now on the framework side side we were um you definitely want to mention bootstrap bootstrap is the open source front end framework to help you design websites. Uh, the tagline is Bootcamp. Uh, Bootstrap is the most popular HTML, CSS, JS framework for developing responsive mobile first projects on the web. I used Bootstrap on a lot of different projects just because I'm not a great designer, but it's easy to just throw Bootstrap in. It's great. Um, a lot of there's definitely some criticism because Bootstrap has become super popular and a lot of websites have been look like they're making you can if you go to a bootstrap website you can usually tell unless they had a really good designer that changed a lot of it angular and angular js um, this is kind of confusing i talk about the differences between angular js which is usually known as 1.0 and then angular which is now 2.0 which is the typescript based version of it and there's actually angular 4 out right now and I talked a little bit about the differences and that you should know that uh, if you were, and just to give a little tidbit here, if you're going to start out, I would look at Angular 1. It seems to be um, very popular and many, many websites are, are using it. I would say more than Angular 2. You know, some shops have moved over to Angular 2 and Angular 1 is still being supported. Ember.js, uh, I'm a big fan of Ember. I wrote a book on it, which you can find if you sign up for my mailing list, you can find out more information about it. And uh, it has some, I call it the batteries included framework because, you know, with its amazing build tools, you can come up with an app right away. You have the router, you have uh, the UI layer, you have components, you have the build tools, everything's built into one. So you can just get going really quickly and it favors convention over configuration. It's a little highly opinionated, but you can, it is flexible. You can break out of some of the things inside Ember. So it's awesome. Aurelia is the forward looking framework uh, made by Rob Eisenberg. It's another uh, single page application framework like React and Angular and Ember and Vue for that matter. 
and uses some of the newer features of ECMAScript. Um, it's really easy to, you're definitely writing in JavaScript. Um, you're not using any directives or anything when you're using Aurelia. And then I talk about Vue.js, which is uh, the next book I'm writing, which once again, if you check out my uh, plug here, uh, you can check out my mailing list. I have a link below. I can give you the first chapter for free if you're interested in learning more about Vue. But it's definitely consists of templates and, tran and it supports transitions and two-way data binding. And it has this focus on reactivity. And I, uh, it's uh, it's definitely something you should check out. So I'm kind of I'm gonna wrap this up now. The video's kind of gone long, but uh, those are the ten frameworks and libraries that I recommend all beginners check out. If like I said, if you have one that you think I missed here or one that shouldn't be on this list, leave a comment below. That'd be great. And also click that subscribe button. That really helps me out. And if you're a super fan and you've gotten to the end of this video here, click that little that little bell icon so you get notified next time I send a video out. So that, that would be awesome. And if you do that, uh, let me know. Maybe the first two, one person let, lets me know that they do, did that. You can go ahead and tweet me and I'll get you a free copy of my book, um, ebook version of Vue.js in action. Let me know. Thanks, take care.